so let's start creating some white particles. I prefer to start always with splash. We can, of course, create splash and foam together, and this is a faster way of uh, having things, but we don't have really control over them separately more than we have like here. And also if I create this and this alone, we can shade them, export them and change them alone. Uh, that's a more controllable way. So I can start from splash because foam uh, can be created from splash. So we create splash and we have the main water body and then we can create a foam from that. Before I do anything, I change the domain into cache mode because I don't want to re-simulate the domain every time I create. I want to create a new particles. So we will just create the domain particles once. We we'll put it in the cache mode means the real flow will read those from the hard disk. Also the emitter, but it doesn't matter really here. And then we start creating splash and foam. Let's start by creating the splash. As you can see, this is a container for the splash. Inside this area, we will be able to create splash. Outside of this area, we can't create a splash. It's just to contain and to make sure we have splash whatever we, we need, not everywhere. And we can make it larger. Just make sure to contain these particles inside. And here the wave will move further. So everything is inside this box. Let's see the parameters. So when we create these, the, the splash particles, we have two options or actually three options. One of them is dumb, as mentioned here. The dumb particles is chaotic particles. The idea about those is that they don't have relationship between each other. And basically they are controlled by the main body of water and the gravity and some parameters here. It's so useful to create this as one of the splash splashes um, because they form some kind of clouds, which is similar to the mist somehow. It's so useful when you have something very violent, as we will see in the whale project. And we will do that even here. But we have other two kinds. One of them is liquid hybrido, which we will do now, which is concentrated amount of particles, splash particles. The idea about those is that they are controlled by Navier-Stokes equation, which is the flip solver equation, which is the same one used here in the domain. And they are so uh, concentrated, so we will see exactly how, how they will act like they are a part of the body, the water body. As example, if they, the wave will hit this stroke and some of the water comes here, the splash hybrido particles will act like exactly they are spilling out of the rock down, which is so cool. But the dumb particles will not do that. The other third particle, you rarely will use this one, but the main use for it is for medium to small scale scenes. When we have, as example, a shark and we have close up uh, camera, we can use this one to create more accurate particles. It's very slow compared to the other two. Let's start by creating the liquid hybrid particles. The cell size. We can imagine that the hybrido, the splash particles uh, domain has uh, voxels, and this is the size of each voxel, uh, voxel. If we will reduce this, we will create more particles, and at the same time, it will be more accurate. We can go down here to the emission rate, and the emission rate, basically, the number of particles during that time. If we increase this number, we have more particles three ways to increase the amount of particles. One of them is cell size. Second the one is the emission rate. And the third one actually it's a combination of these three numbers as we will see. Let's jump to uh, angle threshold. The angle threshold is these parameters define when 
are which is the condition to create a new particle. The angle threshold in the water body, if you notice here, we have water body or surface. If we choose one point here, we can find that it has a normal, a direction, normal direction. So if we will create a new particle splash from here, it will have a direction. So the angle between these two vectors is defined by the angle threshold. If the angle threshold is under 45, which is the angle, a new splash particle will be created. If it's bigger than this amount, it will not be created. Means that if I, I, I will increase this number, I will create more particles. The curvature is the roundness of this um, surface. It's just unitless uh, number. Whenever I decrease this number, I am allowing the, the water, the domain to create more splash particles. The same here, if I will reduce this number means even if the hybrido or yes, the domain particles are slow, faster than certain number here, which is the speed, a new uh, splash particle will be created. As example, if I will put here 10, means that I'm allowing less particle to be created because basically I'm telling if the speed of the main domain is less than 10, I don't need to create particle. Let's bring it back to two and continue. The same for vorticity. I'm allowing all the particles. It doesn't matter what kind of vorticity you have. And let's remember the vorticity of the domain is something we have to discuss later. For the neighbors, two, or I can say three. For each two, a new splash particle will be created. I need two to create the third one. That's important. If I will increase this number, I need three uh, hybrido uh, domain particles to create one number. So I will keep it two. Now for the position variation, this is the most important factor or attribute. As it shows here, around the position around each particle allow a new splash particle to be created. If will, I increase this number, means I'm increasing the variation, I'm increasing the possibility for the particle to be created. But this is very sensitive number. If I will push this number to, as example, one, the amount of particles will be created is a huge, which I don't need. And it will be bulky, means it will be clustered, like um, not just really distributed well. So this parameter is so critical and uh, the values is around 0 0.1 in general. We can decrease it and we'll have much less particles, but it will be really uh, distributed well. Uh, so it's just a balance between the two values between smaller than 0 0.1 and bigger than 0 0.1. The same for the angle. It's um, the variation of the angle. If I will increase this number more particles, less, less particles and uh, velocity. We will know exactly how to use these both, both numbers to enhance the dumb um, particle shape. Secondary splash, we rarely use that, but we can create that one. So basically it just um, create a new splash particle whenever the uh, particle, the splash particle collide with the surface of the water. We don't want to do that. It's expensive in terms of calculations. For the surface offset, I don't need to have offset. I need them to be created exactly from where they should be. For the splash min lifetime, I don't need them to live forever. So because of that, I can give it like three seconds as example, or even I can give it just min and max time. I will give it three to 4.5 and we'll change later. Foam strength, this is unitless number and it means for the possibility to create a foam from the splash particles 100%. That's it. We can create some particles and see how everything can happen. So all I need to do is to make sure that I am going to command line here to clip on your screen to speed up things and we can just start simulating things. 
reset everything and I will come back. So we had some particles, but it's just really very small amount of particles. As you can see them here, almost 17, 18 particles, nothing. 120, nothing. So I will stop the simulation and I will change some parameters to have more particles. Let's go here and just really increase the amount of particles. I will say 700,000. This is a big number, but let's see what's gonna happen. I will increase this number because this will allow more particles to be created. Um, for the curvature, I need the particles to be created from everywhere. I can just decrease this number also. Uh, we don't have to really change everything, but I'm, I'm going up and down. Just now I'm allowing a lot of particles to be created to see the other way of how everything is happening. For the speed, I don't need the particles to be created from everywhere here. I need them to be created from the most faster areas of the hybrido. So I can increase this number a little. No change here. I will leave everything as it is. Maybe I can change this number later, but now let's simulate and see what we will get. I'll come back after the simulation happen. Now I have some frames, which I can see not much of particles are created, but let's see, let's just analyze them. As you can see, they are really concentrated in certain area, not everywhere. And at the same time, they are much more than before. You can say 8,000 or something, almost 9,000. But are, they are really are created in the areas which it has enough velocity and curvature. That means we can just increase the particles by including other areas, reducing the numbers here. Let's go further. See? These are the particles here and new particles will be created in this area. Let's see. Now, this is how was the simulation. More particles are coming from here. I will stop the simulation and I will increase the numbers. So now I will not change really much here. I will just change this number. Let's change it to 0 0.14 and see how much the particle is going to be really more. I will reset everything and start simulating things. Of course, you can press this button to update the timeline and see how everything is moving. No particles. No curvature, no no actual uh, shape for the wave to create particles. I'll just put it here so I can see it. Thirty five. I think we will have particles in here. Still no particles. Now. We have some particles, much more, five thousands, have eleven thousands. Just remember something, the amount of particles we have in the domain are really small, means the amount of the splash particles are enough. We, we are talking about almost 90 to 100,000 for the domain. And we have in here 24 or 25,000 for the splash is uh, relatively tells the story. But remember, usually when you have the domain like 10 millions, sometimes the splash can be 15 millions or 20 millions. After we finish from this course, you will understand how much particles you need for uh, this size of scenes. 
which is so important because later you don't need really to ask yourself what kind of products I need to create, how much products I need to create to put on 3D and render and the quality will show, uh, you know, real particles. As much as you can create particles, actually, as much as you have uh, elastic results. But of course, you need to manage with as few as you can. We have 16,000. Let's move here. New wave of particles will be created. Again, we have good amount of particles. I will wait until the simulation is finished and I will come back. Now we have more particles. Let's see. Starts from here, we have almost 40,000. Then goes down, less particles. They will continue here, then they will die based on the timing we have here. They don't live much, not like the foam. Again, another wave and another wave. They are good and remember for Every two of these particles, we create one splash. This is Never's threshold. This number is good now. Maybe we'll have to reduce it or something if we increase the domain particles number. So now let's jump and create another kind of particles. Before we do that, let's just discuss one thing. This is a geometry, but it's not part of the simulation as we mentioned. This is the one which is the part of the simulation. And also we have the rocks, a part of the simulation. Their interaction with the main water body, with the splash, with the foam, with everything, ruled by some conditions, which is here. So the grid friction means every single object here or uh, geometry has a friction. If we increase this number, we mean that we have more friction. It will uh, just uh, not allow the um, liquid to uh, move freely when it touch this rock or this land. So we have friction bandwidth means how if we will imagine that we have just a counter counter around this rock, the friction will affect the particles with the distance we have here. So 0 0.2 meters, the friction effect will be uh, available. After that, there is no effect uh, from the rock over the particles. And the interaction factor, which is the most important thing here, if I increase this number, means it will be like uh, the impact between the uh, particles and the geometry will be much. So if I will have the whale jumping, as example later, uh, it will hit the particles more and they will bounce more. So if we will change these parameters, we will have another behavior. And we can do that actually and see the result. We will do that in, in details later. But also for this, I changed this number into 0 0.01 just to have them really accurately uh, drawn as mentioned before. If I will go here and see how they are, it's a good presentation for them. If I will make it, if I need it to be more accurate, I can reduce this number. Also, I have this surface offset. If you will notice here, I will go to this mode, the ISO, ISO surface. Because we are working in low resolution now, I don't need really more than this. But if I will reduce this number, you will have everything inside, which is just smaller than the, uh, the actual rock. If I increase this number, we have it more. Zero is exactly on the borders, but as you can see now, there are a lot of geometry, which is not within the collision area. So because of that, I bought 0 0.02, just to make sure we have everything covered. 0 0.01 is even good. Now, if I will go 0 0.02 here, it will be really accurate. And I don't need this value. 
but I will leave it because it will increase the calculations, which I don't need really now in this stage. Other than that, we have the first splash. Let's go and create the next one. The same way, I can create a new splash, but also I can duplicate this one. So I will just uh, select it. Control D on the keyboard, I have another one. And I will call it here, splash dumb, because I will use dumb particles for this one. And uh, let's just change this because it's just having this number, let's say one. Now I change it to one, it will not import the particles I have here, as you can see, because basically it will search about the previous name. So I'll change it to three now, but later I'll change it to one. Look now, now it will import everything. This is so important. So splash dumb. The only thing I will change here is to change it to dumb and see the difference between the two. I will hide this one now, and maybe I will just increase the numbers or play with these numbers. But before I do anything, I will bring this to uh, let's leave it as it is actually. I will put some different numbers like 1 million as example here. I will decrease this 1, 60 and I will put this as it was the default. Um, maybe I will leave this as it is or just decrease it a little. I will really not change much here and I will leave this the same. Let's see what we'll get. I will simulate and I will come back again to see what is the difference between the splash particles and the dumb particles. So we have some particles now. Let's see. And they are not few, but they are not much also. The difference between them and between the splash particles is that they are a little more fuzzy, if you notice. What we can do is that we can increase their numbers. Let's stop the simulation. And let's increase their number. Maybe we can play with the parameters here, but one of the methods is to just increase this number. And we can do that by just going to 0 0.2. Let's see what we'll get if we will change this into 0 0.2. It seems really small uh, difference, but I think you will notice now a huge amount of uh, particles. Let's go. Now we have some frames. And as you can see, I'm hiding the domain. It just showed the domain. And we have more particles now. I am at 63 in the simulation. Before, it was almost 122,000. Here, now we are talking about 100. bigger amount. It's fuzzy more also. So this is it, sorry. So as example, we are in the simulation at 74. Let's see before and after. So before it was 14,000. Now we are talking about 72,000. If we compare between this one and the splash one, which is the hybrido, small amount of particles, no. They are big amount of particles, but they are concentrated. So this is the difference. Adding both will create really interesting shape of particles. Let's increase the numbers and see more interesting uh, pattern. But just to do one thing, um, of course, if we will increase the domain particles number will get really more interesting shape. That's what we will do when we uprise everything. Now we are testing and trying to see some development. 
Now let's create the final white particle system, which is the foam. And basically what we can do is to just press foam. I don't want to create the foam and the splash together from this menu because I want to control it alone and I can even hide it or shade it alone. It's better to create it this way. So let's change its name here because I don't have except one in the system. So I will say form one. Now what I can do is to change a few numbers here and to start the simulation. But before we do anything, let's just discuss a few numbers. The density is the same as other particle system. It's water, so it's, I suppose it's 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. And the other parameters here are almost the same in the splash, but the only difference is here. So whenever I want to create the foam, the foam can be created from any other system. So I can create it from the water body, from the domain, and I can create it from the splash or even from the bubbles. So the procedure is that the foam particle will be created if any of these systems particles reach to a certain limits or speed or angle or any, uh, let's say, conditions. So the first thing here is that I can create it from splash. Whenever the splash particle touch the water surface, that means it can die or replaced by foam particle. So now I will just deactivate this because I don't want to create it from the splash. The typical way is to create it from splash, but I don't want to do that in this scenario. The second thing is from bubble. I don't have bubbles. So the only way to create these foam particles is from the domain itself. Now I will change a few numbers here. I will just prefer to keep them as they are. Then we'll change them based on the results because we are just simulating low resolution liquid now. So it's easy to do that. But I will just increase their numbers to 60,000 and for the angle threshold, I will not decrease it or increase it because again, I want to see what can happen without any changes. And for the position variation, I will leave it as it is. Also, this number is so critical to in uh, form as it is in the splash system. Also, I can change a few numbers here and let's introduce some of these numbers. The surface offset is the same as in the splash. So I don't need the foam particle system to be under or above the water. I want them exactly on the surface of this water. Later, we will do one very important operation for the foam particles, especially for the foam particles, because they should be uh, swimming on the surface of the water. So if the surface of the water is so regular like this, or it has just the domain particle position, everything going to be all right. But when we create the mesh and we create this displacement, the displacement will create some heights. So eventually we will have the foam particles going up and down below the surface of the mesh. So what we can do is to activate a new procedure, which is this one or this one, enforcing or snapping these particles to the surface of the new displaced water or mesh surface. But for now, we will leave it as it is zero. For stringiness, this number will increase the filament shape of the foam, as you will see. So whenever it's close to one, we will see some lines, more clear lines of the foam particle, which is natural. But if you decrease it a little, we will see more randomized distribution for the foam particles, noisy. So I will just decrease it and we can increase it later. For the foam min life frame, I can just decrease this because 60 is big number. So let's say 0 0.6 or 8, 2nd and for the maximum, let's say 6 seconds. Else I don't need to change things here, min friction and max friction. Remember that the foam particle will 
be floating on the top of the water surface and it should slide or move with it. This is the kind of friction I imagine will work well for the particles. So if I will decrease the friction or the max friction, I'm allowing the particle to freely move independently from the water surface. But for now, I will leave everything as it is and I will start the typical simulation process. So as we said before, what we can do is first make sure the domain is in cache mode. Then we start activating and deactivating the particle systems one by one. So if you will start by deactivating the foam and the dumb splash system and just only activating the first thin splash and we can simulate. After we finish, what we can do is to deactivate this one because we don't want it to contribute uh, creating the splash dump. And we can activate this one, run the simulation again. Only the domain particles are contributing, creating all the other kinds of uh, particle systems. Now we can deactivate this one and activate foam. In case we activated this uh, selection, that means we are allowing the splash to contribute or to create foam particles. In that case, we need to put both these on cache mode. But for now, because we are not selecting this choice, we need to deactivate these because they will do nothing. And for the foam here, I will activate it and I will simulate again. So after we simulate everything, we will have the results and we'll discuss all the numbers and we'll start increasing or changing the parameters before we do the high resolution simulation.